Episode 1 of Solo Leveling defied expectations. Fans were not prepared for such a high quality. I can't wait to go over the next few chapters and discuss Episode 2 with you all because I know we are in for an incredible adventure. Before I begin my evaluation of Episode 1, let me clarify a few things. I stated before that Solo Leveling's originator passed away. That's not right. The author, or originator, is still with us. It turned out that the person who died was the artist. Sadly, he will not be able to witness the magnificent wonders he has made come to life. Peace be with you, Zhang Seng Rock. In addition, I received the wrong chapter count for the first episode. The entire episode was really contained in roughly four chapters, so if we read the next four chapters, we should be able to anticipate the next one very well. And we're going to work on it here today. To help the video rank higher in the algorithm, please be sure to subscribe, click the notification button, and leave a comment below sharing your opinions on solo leveling. The world building of solo leveling was built in the very first episode. These sorts of Dungeons and Dragons portals first emerged a decade ago. And that's when individuals began to get superpowers. Depending on your level of strength, you would be assigned a rank if you woke up with a superpower. Additionally, we witness a number of S-rank heroes utterly defeating creatures who were annihilating everyone else at the opening of the episode. In that sense, it's comparable to One Punch Man, with the exception that in solo levels, you are essentially limited to your awakening strength. You can raise your rank, but you can't raise your gear, which will give you an advantage in battle. At that point, Sung Jin Wu, the protagonist and the world's weakest hunter, is presented to us. His rank is E rank. Every assignment he undertakes ends with him suffering deadly injuries and barely making it out alive. In an attempt to raise money for his mother's medical care, he is gathering jewels and antiques. The hunters earn a living in this manner. These are the dungeons they traverse. They conquer the labyrinth. They are able to sell the magical objects they get. In addition to their many other uses, such as crafting armor and weapons, these magical objects also function as a pure energy source. Thus, Sung, the main character, joins a small group and they navigate a D-rank dungeon. They reach a massive door after taking off the first wave of gangs, and beyond it lies a foe considerably more formidable than the D-rank they had anticipated. The group realizes they are in serious trouble when one of the hunters is beheaded, and they are all overcome with panic. Let's go on to episode 2 now. They discovered this tablet containing these three commandments as they went into the boss room. Worship the Lord first. Second, give thanks to the Lord. Thirdly, demonstrate your faith. They didn't give it much thought at first, but after a few fatalities and everyone begins to fear, it becomes clear that these commandments, which are dungeon rules, are really, very essential. You notice that there are guidelines you must follow in order to beat this hidden dungeon level because it is so difficult. It is not enough to win by sheer force. Furthermore, even the B-rank healer is terrified of this hidden dungeon due to its extreme potency. And the show will deal with this as a recurrent topic. Sheer dread. As even this dungeon group's most powerful heroes are utterly terrified, sobbing, and collapsing to the ground. They anticipate dying. For them, this seemed unattainable. Additionally, some of them make a genuine attempt to escape, but things don't work out very well for them. The enormous statues will chop you to pieces if you rush to the entryway. Additionally, the boss, the largest statue in the chamber, will fry you with his laser eyes if you run around it. You now have a better understanding of the main character thanks to this episode. Sung. Even though he is weak, he proves to be quite the genius when it comes to deciphering the situation and understanding the rules, since these enormous sculptures aren't just murdering people at random and applying them. They only attack if you try to flee or if you do something against the rules. Praise the Lord, then, is the first step. Sung immediately determines that the largest and creepiest statue in the room is the Lord. By praise, he means to crouch down, as the big laser beam will fry you if you stand up over a certain level. He then commands his entire team to kneel. At this point the laser eyes of the statues begin to fade and they begin to understand the significance of these regulations. However, a spooky thing occurs. The moment everyone is on their knees, the boss gives us this sarcastic smirk. The boss appears to enter phase 2 after this, as it rises from its chair and begins to move about with loud footsteps. The first commandment was to bend down before the Lord to a height of, say, 4 feet in order to worship him. And to pray to the Lord is the second step. One of the heroes, donning a cross, approaches and says, All right, let me try my hand at it. He then extracts his crucifix. He approaches it, 
begins to say some prayers, and behaves as though it were God. And we can tell that things are not going to go well for him since he gets severely squashed by this enormous, god-like foot. I can't wait to watch this animation. Everyone panics and freaks out over this. Knowing they are destined to perish, they all take off running. And a few of them are cut in two. This poor guy freezes to death. They are now at a loss on what to do. The area is surrounded by an immensely strong foe, and in the center of it is a massive boss monster that is approaching, trampling on them, and unleashing a titan-style strike. After piecing the puzzle together, Sung, the E-rank hero, the lowest and weakest hero, discovers that some of these statues really contain instruments rather than weapons. And as you approach one of them, the device begins to play music, giving the impression that you are in a safe area. Thus, each person must disperse to these safety monuments. Regretfully, not many of them are able to attend. The main character, Sung, also erroneously believes that one of these sculptures is a musical instrument when, in fact, it is a massive shield. And this monstrosity is actually going to crush his leg off. The B-rank healer approaches and attempts to assist him, but his condition is dire. As a matter of fact, only six heroes remain out of the original 17. Eleven have passed away very fast. And of those six, two have serious injuries. It seems like they are in really poor condition. They have successfully deciphered two of the three commandments, but the great majority of their team has perished. Phase 3 begins when this altar erupts from the earth, signaling its activation. Worshipping the Lord was therefore the first step. Praying to the Lord was the second. Thirdly, you needed to demonstrate your faith. At this point, Sun requests that the other heroes help him approach the altar. And as they arrive, the altar is surrounded by these odd orange and blue flames. They now discuss the need of finishing this dungeon, citing the fact that it is only accessible for seven days. All of the dungeon's creatures can exit through the portal if no one has conquered it in the allotted seven days. However, the higher level heroes concluded it wasn't worth their time because it was a D-rank dungeon. Hence, these low-rank heroes must end this dungeon immediately to prevent the huge titan, the stone god titan, from emerging and destroying humanity. Now that they are at this altar, individuals begin to fret and become frightened as they attempt to figure out how to complete the third job. One of the heroes, a woman, manages to break out as the doors open, becoming the first hero to ever truly escape. However, this is actually problematic since one of the nearby flames goes out as she flees. Sung then begins to speculate as to what may be going on. One of the red flames, which is based on the quantity of people, extinguished the moment she departed. The door opened when all the crimson flames had emerged. There seems to be a countdown timer of some kind. All of them are expected to remain in the center and have confidence in their ability to escape the dungeon. But everyone is going to perish if they flee in fear. They are all meant to cooperate, but the hero's extreme fear and panic are making them break the game's rules, which is likely to lead to issues. This, in my opinion, is where the upcoming episode will conclude. Probably near the end of episode 2, when the door opens and one person flees. Thus, I believe that episode 3 will mark the conclusion of this story's first arc. Well, this is going to be a really thrilling experience. You can be sure that the voice acting will be excellent. You know, this huge crowd of people going to be screaming in fear as they're being chopped, melted, and all this kind of thing. It's rather thrilling. Really, this should appeal to everyone who like Attack on Titan. This should be enjoyable for fans of One Punch Man. It's simply such an amazing tale. Solo leveling. If you've read the tale, you'll know what I mean when I say that it becomes really good at chapter 40. Like, once you get to chapter 40, there's no turning back. Without giving anything away, let's just say that if each episode has four chapters, we should reach that position about halfway through the first season, which is fantastic. I'm really excited. Man, this anime is going to kill it on the charts. This may turn out to be the year's best anime. Prepare yourself, get excited, and subscribe. When the next episode airs, I'll be evaluating it. Until then, I'll see you all soon for some more solo leveling.